Tennessee favored by nearly a touchdown against Florida. Anyone got this game on their radar? I think you need to. I think you need to for several reasons. Number one, it's a, it's a helmet game. Anytime those two helmets are on the field, big deal, especially in the South. But I want to tell you whether you live in Duluth or whether you live in Seattle or Tacoma or whether you live in Sacramento, California, you know, you probably thought some things about Florida when you watched them in that Utah game. I was on the field. I know I thought something about them and probably didn't need to be said out loud because this is a family-friendly show, right? Well, here is the theme that we always see in September. I, I just said it about Bama. I'm going to say it about Florida. You have seen some teams do some things. You've seen teams try approaches and game plans, and they don't work. Okay, that's obvious to everyone once the game happens. The mistake people make this early in the season is thinking that the one version of a team you've seen will be the same version of that team you see another nine or ten weeks. And that's not the case. In fact, when you get beaten soundly and you just suck, that entire coaching staff meets the next day and says, all right, let's completely wash that one, flush it down the toilet. What are we changing? What are we changing? What are we changing? And the entire methodology is to not duplicate what they just did. So I don't know if Florida is going to beat Tennessee Saturday, but I do know that perhaps some of the things that plague them against Utah might just might be corrected to a certain degree here. Now, Tennessee is 0 and 9 since 2005 in the swamp. It's a really big game here. The, I was at this game last year. It was 38 to 33 in Neyland. It wasn't that close. Florida closed the gap late. I think they covered. I think we had a backdoor cover there late. Here's the question that I have for Tennessee fans and for anyone else. What are you at quarterback? Because I think by this point we know you're not last year. You're not Hendon Hooker. Now, you don't have to be because defense has improved. But I wonder, because I know Florida is about to try and expose it and the Swamp's going to try and expose it. Joe Milton going on the road for his first true road start as the starting quarterback at Tennessee. I don't think Tennessee's the team America thinks they are. They're good. I got them in my top ten. I'm not saying they're not good. I'm saying... Let's be real now. If you're an Arkansas fan, how much of Tennessee have you watched? You didn't watch that Virginia game. I did only because it was down the street so I could walk over there to the stadium with director Colin and producer Jesse. But most of America did not watch Tennessee versus Virginia. You just saw 49-13, and you certainly didn't watch the game against Austin P last week. And so you see a blowout against the only Power 5 team they've played, and you think they just, they just bombed away. That is not what's happening. Joe Milton's had accuracy issues, and that's not the biggest shock in the world for anyone who's watched him to this point in his career. What if I told you they got more rushing yards than passing yards so far this year? What if I told you Tennessee has only put up two pass plays of over 20 yards the whole season? And that includes against Austin P, the fighting direct Collins of Austin P last week. Conversely, and let me turn my paper sideways, they have 6.1 yards per rush this year. They're a running team right now. It's early. They're a running team right now. And so, what could we see Saturday? I, I remember that Utah game. First play from scrimmage. Bomb. Touchdown. Discombobulated Florida like nobody's business, and the rest of the game was on tilt for them. Well, what if the opposite happens here? What if Florida just stones Tennessee early? And what if, what if they're getting some, some obvious passing down third and longs, and they're forcing Joe Milton to throw into the teeth of that defense? Who knows? Maybe the outcome's different. Which leads me to my next question slash point, and that is, can Tennessee's defense carry a game for them if they need to? You think about Tennessee, you think about a game like 38-33 last year. You think about them winning that kind of track meet. You think about them outscoring folks. Well, they've had 11 sacks so far this year defensively, double-digit tackles for loss each game so far this year. Really good defensively. Now, you could argue how stiff or not stiff the tests were, but they've been really good so far. To me, that's the matchup. That's the matchup for Florida now uh, because you're not in a hostile environment. You're in your own backyard, so, so you hope those externals actually help you. But against Utah, Utah lived in their backfield. Utah had five sacks, seven tackles for loss. If Tennessee does anything like that against you, you're probably done unless you're picking off Joe Milton four times. You're probably done. Can Florida run the ball, though, against the front? The disruptive factor is one thing, but also can they run the ball against them? And I have no clue. They have the capability. I have no clue if they will. They were terrible against Utah on the ground. 21 carries for 13 yards, and that's all anyone wanted to talk about in the postgame. I was in Napier's press conference after that game. 
that's what people were talking about before he walked into the room. That's what they talked about when he walked into the room. And that's what they still whispered about when they walked out of the room. I was just enjoying the free food at that point. But last week against McNeese, they ran for 327. Jesse, is that right? 327? It's a lot of yardage. So where, where are we going to settle I mean, if we, if we add up those two and then divide by two, it lands in like the 175 or 200 range. Hey, point being, I'd take 150 on the ground if it's complimentary and Florida plays good ball. Uh, that approach, by the way, just if you could do nothing more than negate the negative plays, if you could just negate the penalties, you had nine of them against Utah, if you could just have a, have a tie on first down each way and lean on that crowd, that's not even in the box score. What I just talked about doesn't gain you a single yard. I didn't talk about a single completed pass. I'm just saying negate the stuff that assisted in you shooting your own self in the foot in week one. And you got a game on your hands here. The model versus Vegas. What, what does Vegas think? Well, Vegas has got Tennessee minus six and a half as the current line. Our model is a little bit shorter than that. Our model has Tennessee minus five and a half. And I have got a feeling that we're going to see an inspired performance from Florida Saturday. It's the way college football works, guys. If this is a track meet, it's Tennessee's game. I don't think it will be because I don't think at this point Joe Milton's playing that kind of football. Somehow, some way, Florida's going to find a way to turn this into a hammer fight. And not only am I going to take them to cover, I think Florida's going to find a way somehow to pull the upset. And all of a sudden, the SEC East looks every bit as murky beneath Georgia as the SEC West does. I'm not going to get much agreement on that in the control room. I know that. But the current odds to win the SEC championship, Tennessee fourth. Uh, Florida is, oh, they're nowhere to be found. They're, Florida and Missouri, actually Florida's behind Missouri in terms of odds to win the SEC right now. <sighs> brutal, just brutal.